this is our uh, John Deere planter. It's a 1770 no-till planter, uh, 24 row, set up on 30 inch rows. Um, we've made pretty much modifications to just about all of it to get it to do what we want it to do. Um, we're running the precision plates from precision planting in the units. Uh, we have the corn um, also or planting sunflowers and milo with it also. Um, it has the pneumatic down pressure. Uh, we do not have any of the, the fancier precision planting stuff for the John Deere variable down pressure stuff, but that's something we've definitely looked at with the highly variable soils that we have in our area. We have the, the pro drive on it. The main reason for that is to get rid of the chains. We were planting our sunflowers into corn stalks in a no-till situation. We was getting a lot of damage with corn stalks coming up into them chains, jumping units off. So we went to the pro drives. Um, we obviously have the Thompson closing wheels here on the back. We have the Keaton seed firmers. And uh, we have an RK product seed tube guard in there around the seed tube. And then we have the RK products gauge wheel kit. Holds them gauge wheels up tight against that disc, which is a pretty important factor when we uh, are running into heavy wheat residue or what we hope to be heavy wheat residue when we're planting our corn. Um, it keeps from pinching that stubble in there between the gauge wheel and the disc and balling everything up. And then probably the biggest modification that we've made and one of the most critical, I think, just here recently, uh, working with some other no-tillers here in Colorado, we figured out that you can put um, a narrow gauge wheel off of a John Deere air seeder, which would be right here, off of a John Deere air seeder on there. And what that allows us to do is it makes the unit about three inches narrower than your standard unit. And most of our solid seeded crops, like our cereal grains and stuff, are planted in 10 inch rows. And with this setup, it allows us to run them units between 10 inch rows and not run over any of the stubble, um, which we really like. And what drove us to that decision is if we could take three inches off the width of the unit, on 30 inch spacing we decided we could save 10 percent of our residue which doesn't sound like very much until you do the math and it and we decided it was several hundred acres of residue that we were running over that we were allowed to leave standing by by putting the narrow gauge wheels on and and for us in the conditions we plan into that that was a pretty critical component of the decision to put them on there a couple years ago we uh, were planting uh, some corn, we got a, a, a rain, and uh, we, won't, we were pushed for time. We were up against deadlines on the insurance, and so we got out there and we had some closing issues uh, with the rubber tired press wheels. And so we put these on there, and I actually kind of think they work pretty good in the, in the dry soil too. Just gives us a little bit more action on the closing of, this, of the furrow. Um, we do have the wedge kits in there. We don't have them turned to where they're pitched. We've tried that a little bit. It's just a little too aggressive for what we do. So we like that. We also like the fact you're allowed to put in that other spring that runs less down pressure. If we got less down pressure on them closing wheels, that's keeping that down pressure on the opener. And does it make a huge difference? I don't know. I think it does make a difference though because every pound of down pressure we can keep on them openers and keep them running right where they're at is what we're wanting to do. You know, we don't run any row cleaners. Um, even planting into, you know, we've had up to 100 bushel corn residue. We don't run any, any row cleaners on the front of it. Um, the tubes you see sticking out the back is where we've been streaming all of our fertilizer. Um, just streaming it out on the ground behind. I don't know if it's the best situation, but it keeps us from running any kind of uh, fertilizer opener on the front, which again is running over residue, which is creating mud issues if you've got mud underneath that residue. It just eliminates all of that. It's worked pretty good for us. Um, obviously, we're hoping if, if this compost deal works a little bit, the fertilizer tubes will go away anyway. Uh, we're, we're hoping to, to switch most of our acres over to, to compost and eliminate the commercial fertilizer. One of the big things is all of this stuff on this planter, just the logistics of trying to run a planter and putting all of the fertilizer on at one time gets to be a pretty big logistical issue when you're pushed for time in the spring trying to cover acres. And even in the fall when we're seeding our wheat or our winter cereals, 
um, we're typically harvesting at the same time and it just if we could have the compost spread by somebody else and plus all the soil health benefits and there right now there's not a lot of difference in cost at what we're looking at doing and we feel like we're going to get the same nutrient package plus all the micronutrients that it makes more sense to go with the compost and I guess that we haven't ever really done it. We haven't spread any compost yet, but we're probably gonna, we're hoping to switch at least 75% of our acres this year.